There's this moment where Mary Jane's character flipped. One Spider-Man comic that changed everything going forward. And in my opinion, is the most influential story in her whole character's history. Because without it, we wouldn't have the Mary Jane Watson of today. My name is Lewis and welcome to the channel that loves Spider-Man just as much as you do. Now the comic that I'm referring to is The Amazing Spider-Man issue 292, which was titled Growing Pains. This issue follows Mary Jane as she visits her family in Pittsburgh. But of course, wanting to keep an eye on her, Peter also tags along. Unknown to Peter, however, MJ is actually visiting none other than her father, Philip Watson. Yeah, that's right, that Philip Watson. Her father in the books up to this point had been known to be someone that Mary Jane resented during her backstory. Someone that the audience had become familiar with as a staple of MJ's iconic origin. And to see him show up here was all the more confusing at first. First. However, it turned out that Mary Jane's trip went a lot deeper than that. You see, as it turns out, MJ's father was knee-deep in some organized crime at the time that involved MJ's sister, Gail. Gail was unfortunately left in prison because of this, despite having two kids. MJ, wanting to rescue her so she could be there for her children, decided to do her father's bidding for him in order to help Gail. However, during all of this family drama, there was more going on than Peter first thought as Alistair Smythe once again returned with his Spider Slayers. Those damn Spider Slayers. They're like in every Spider-Man comic. They just don't leave this guy alone. I know that they only threw this in here so this story could have some sort of action, but it's so comically funny how detached Smythe is from the story. It'll be all serious talk between MJ and Peter, and then it'll cut to a Giga Chad looking Alistair Smythe hatching an evil plan. So Mary Jane is plexed with a hard decision whether to help her father or whether to turn her father in. And obviously all of the past that she has with her father makes this decision even more harder. That rhymed. I didn't that wasn't intentional, that rhymed. At first, not being able to overcome her fear of standing up to him, she goes along along with his plan, until during the final battle between Peter and the Spider Slayer, MJ has no choice but to help Peter as the Spider Slayer topples him. In turn, this makes her realize that she does in fact have the mental will and capability to make her own decisions and choices for herself. Her actively helping Spider-Man defeat the Spider Slayer gave her that push that she needed. She realizes that she doesn't have to run from doing what is right. She doesn't have to run when she's scared. To which she turns her father over and subsequently from a mission, rescues Gail from prison as well. But crucially, that is not the most important part of this story. You see, the most important part of this story actually doesn't happen in this issue. It is to do with the few issues before, which are The Amazing Spider-Man issue 290 and The Amazing Spider-Man issue 291. Now you see, those issues may ring a bell for some of you because yes, these are the issues in which Peter first proposed to Mary Jane in the comics. And as we all know, famously, Mary Jane rejected Peter with her leaving for Pittsburgh at the start of issue 291. To which, at the end of issue 292, MJ brings this conversation back around. And yes, she accepts Peter's proposal. She agrees to marry Peter Parker. Now, why does this work so well? And why is it the most important story for Mary Jane in the entire character's history? You may be wondering, it's such a small and quite frankly, niche story. Why does it matter so much? Well, I'm going to tell you why. But before we get into all of that, I actually want to show you guys where I got this comic from in the first place. So yes, this is a first edition of The Amazing Spider-Man 292, the original one back from the 80s. Not only did I get this, but I also got another package that I'm going to reveal to you guys in just a second from a app called Whatnot. Now, what not essentially is like if eBay met Twitch. It allows anyone like myself or even you guys to basically go on there and sell comics. Like if you need a few extra quid, you could go and sell some comics on there. But likewise, you could also buy comics just like how I bought this one and obviously The Amazing Spider-Man 292 off the app as well. And it's really cool because people get to showcase their items and their comics on live streams and then people like me and you can bid on them. You can also win giveaways, but you can also buy stuff outright as well. And it's great because you can find some really cool deals on there. Like, I just got this new issue from the current Amazing Spider-Man run, which is Gang War. I haven't caught up on Gang War yet, so I'm currently reading it right now. But I got both of these comics for literally something like 10 quid, which is like insane. Signing up is super easy, and when you use my link in the description down below, you'll get a free £10 off anything you want. So make sure to click my link in the description down below, and let's get back to why this is the most important comic for Mary Jane in the character's entire history. 
We got a light now. Anyway, but why? Why is this comic so important to Mary Jane's character as a whole? And what makes it so crucial? The first thing that I'd like to talk about is that this is the turning point for when MJ decides to marry Peter, which is actually really significant for her character. Her character, as I've discussed in many videos prior to this one, is someone who doesn't like to be tied down. In the sense that she sees herself as a free-flowing party girl who just likes to do her own thing. She's always flown solo and that is who Mary Jane is. This is because she's always been scared of commitment. She was scared of marrying someone or being with someone long term because that's not who she grew up with. She grew up with the consequences of what a long term marriage can actually do to a couple and she never wanted her or whoever she ended up with to end up like that. However, this story unlocks that part of MJ and that part of her history and really starts to dig deep into this character. It explores MJ's feelings towards Peter and her feelings towards her past. Likewise, this is why Philip is also very important to this story as well. Philip in this comic represents the parts of MJ that are holding her back and tying her down to her past trauma. Philip represents MJ's character in more ways than one. He is a representation of who MJ came to be, the outgoing, brave-faced party girl that had to deal with a trauma past. He was the reason for the way that she was and the way that she would turn out to be. During the conversation MJ has with Peter at the start of the issue, she exclaims that her father almost has her in a chokehold and that she has no choice but to go along with him. Peter explains that's not who she is and not the MJ that he knows and loves and that she can easily refuse him and turn him into the police if she needs to. MJ thanks Peter for having full confidence in her and when they return, MJ decides to help him. MJ conceded to the pressure that Philip gave. Once again, Philip represents her weakness and her past. Or at least that's what it looked like at first. Really, that conversation with Peter would have more influence than it first seemed, as MJ realized that Peter was right all along, as she confronts her past and her insecurities, which is symbolized by her father's eventual arrest, as we discussed earlier in the video. MJ's past is a big part of her character, but this issue really digs deep into her past and allows her to move on. And luckily, to my knowledge, this is a part of the character that hasn't actually really been tampered with or retconned in any sort of way. It's almost like the Gwen Stacy death. It's something that never really has been turned on its head. Like, for example, MJ would go on to have multiple long-term relationships, including the likes of Peter Parker and, of course, Paul in the recent Zeb Wells comics. It's a part of the character that has stayed with her for the long term, showing the growth from the first time that we saw her. And that is why this comic is so important to Mary Jane Watson. If you have never read this comic or this run, I definitely recommend it because it's one of the runs of Spider-Man comics that definitely has some of the most recognizable moments for the character. Plus, it was a part of a sequence of comics right before they started getting really stinky. So this was kind of like peak-ish Spider-Man. Like, obviously, you had the odd ones out in recent years, but, you know, mostly from the 90s onwards after the Clone Saga, it really started to dip in quality. But either way, that is pretty much it for today's video. If you did enjoy, make sure to hit a like on it and also make sure to subscribe. Leave a comment down below what do you think about this story. And I'll see you guys all in the next one. Take care and peace.